very few people have actually looked below the water surface and to see what's there. It's an amazing thing to see when you start looking on the bottom of these streams how there's just all types of organisms. And one of those organisms is the freshwater mussel. There's a fan shell. Freshwater mussels are related to more common things such as clams that you see in the ocean. Well, freshwater mussels usually are found in the larger streams and rivers. I'm a malacologist. That's a mussel biologist. As a whole, what we're here for is conservation of mussels. This is the uh, Center for Mollusk Conservation. We're able to bring in mussels from the wild, hold them here in captivity as our brood stock, and then allowing the river water from here at South Elkhorn Creek to flow over our tanks. We have about 60 species here at the center. Uh, eight of those are federal endangered species. This is another uh, endangered animal we have called the fan shell. Freshwater mussels are, are our natural filter feeders and uh, they're basically act as little tiny pumps that, that keep our water clean. Uh, these are the siphons. Uh, basically, they're little tubes that stick into the water and they're able to pump water in through those tubes and collect any food particles that's in the water column. So you just imagine a million tiny little pumps constantly removing the water, uh, the material from the, the water column and to deposit it on the bottom. What that does is that provides food for animals that live on the bottom like in insects and other things that fish are, are depending on. They're the most endangered group of animals we have in North America. And one of the reasons for that is we have many rivers and streams in this country that have been altered from, from people. Our eventual goal is to be able to grow these species in captivity and then help augment or reintroduce uh, in federally endangered species in areas where they are declining or may have existed at one time and no longer do. What we do to rear the freshwater mussels at center is we take a female mussel, so we'll take the larvae, these are little dots on a piece of paper, uh, the, grain of, the size of a grain of salt or smaller, and we'll count out a number of fish that we get from our, our hatchery or some from other source, and uh, we will put a known amount of larvae into a bucket of water with fish, and it only takes a few minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Now again, again in the wild, what they would do is that these bass would be attracted to that flap, that fishing lure and then they'd come and strike that lure and the mussel would release the larvae. And then we could just take the fish, basically just look at its gills and see if we can see the little specks. And then we'll put them in our system and start growing them. This is the most critical stage of development of these mussels, is the juvenile. The mortality or the death rate is the highest when they're first coming off the fish. When we first get the juveniles into their containers, uh, they'll, most juvenile mussels will do real good for about a month, maybe a couple months, uh, and then they typically, that's where you have problems, and that's when they're going through a growth spurt. So we have this concentrated algae um, to get them over that. And this particular area of the facility is uh, where we grow the algae. Now that we know the recipe, it's, it's not hard at all. Right here we have uh, a juvenile uh, freshwater mussel aquaculture system. These mussels in this system are about a year and a half old. They've spent a whole life in this facility, in this system right here. This is actually a common species that we're using as a test model to see how well we can grow the, the federally endangered species, the pink mucket. The rarest animals we have is the pink mucket. So you can grow them to a taggable and releasable size in a system indoors. We can also release a lot more juveniles at a younger age, supplement the population like that. What we're doing here today on the Green River here at Mumfordville is we're, we're able to release an endangered species of the pink mucket. It hasn't been found here in about 20 years at this particular site. And this was my swimming hole when I was a child 40, 45 years ago. And some of these mussels disappeared during that time and now it's great to see them come back. Very few people in the nation, or in the world for that matter, are, are able to accomplish what we've done here. We're at a unique point in history where we as an agency, a management agency, we can step in and do something beneficial for a resource 
that just links right back to the clean water we drink. You have no idea how exciting it is for me. And it's exciting for me to have my nephew, our fifth generation, to be down here and share us. You know, we're definitely leading the front on, uh, on the restoration. And Almost everything that's rare and periled is usually linked to water. Uh, we as fishermen and, and hunters, we're really interested in, in conservation. And, and when we see a resource like our bass fishing or our sauger fishing going downhill, we really want to know what's going on, and the mussels are the link to helping us understand that. Without uh, Fish and Wildlife's help, these mussels are losing, losing the fight. Well, that's why we're here. My folks thought about it before me, and now I would hope to see my fifth generation here be able to have the, the land as we had it before us.